So to understand how capacitor work as a filter, let's consider this circuit and let's try to understand this part slowly and in step by step manner. Okay. So in this circuit, there is a PSU and this PSU is basically powering this circuit. Okay. And this PSU is actually nothing but the power supply unit. Okay. Which is basically an AC to DC converter. So it takes 230 volt AC and generates the 5 volt DC on the output side. Okay. And then that 5 volt DC is provided to this, this particular circuitry. Okay. But let's consider that the output of this power supply unit is not pure 5 volt DC and it includes some noise. Okay. And we don't want that noise to travel towards this circuit because we want to power this circuit with pure 5 volt DC. Now this noise is actually nothing but the AC components. Okay. Now what do I mean by AC components? See AC components are actually nothing but all the signals or all the frequencies present in power signal other than the DC components. Okay. So from power supply, we are getting both the DC as well as AC components. Okay. But to power our circuitry, we just want DC components. Okay. And we don't want the AC component. So we need to eliminate these AC components from the power line. Right. So how to do that? In such cases, we actually use capacitor. So this capacitor will bypass AC components towards the ground. And on the output side of capacitor, we will get a pure 5 volt DC. Okay. So this is how basically capacitor eliminates the noise. Now you will have a question. How exactly capacitor bypasses noise towards the ground? So let's try to understand that now. You know, you can consider capacitor like a component which provides variable resistance. Okay. And this word resistance is actually not appropriate, you know, when we deal with the capacitor. Instead of that, we actually use a word capacitive reactance. Okay. But just for the sake of simplicity and to understand how exactly capacitor filters the noise, let's consider that it provides variable resistance. Okay. You know, there is actually one animal uh, which is called as chameleon and it actually changes the color as per its surrounding. Okay. In the same way, capacitor changes the resistance based on the property of signal. Now, what resistance capacitor will provide? It actually depends on the frequency of signal or the frequencies present in the noise. Now, for some frequencies, you know, capacitor actually provides very low resistance. And for some frequencies, capacitor provides very high resistance. And for what frequencies it will provide low resistance and high resistance? It actually depends on the value of capacitor that you are using. For example, for X frequency or for a range of frequency, if it provides low resistance, then those frequencies will be bypassed by that capacitor towards the ground. The reason is signal always chooses the shortest path to reach towards the ground. And also it chooses the lowest resistance path. As a result, the signal with such frequencies will be bypassed by the capacitor towards the ground and it will not travel towards the circuit. So this is how basically the capacitor filters out signal with a specific frequency or a range of frequencies. In the same way, for some frequencies, capacitor provides high resistance. So those frequencies will not be bypassed by the capacitor and they will travel towards the circuit. So always remember whenever you have to remove a noise from the signal or power line, there you have to check what's the frequency and considering the frequency, you have to select the capacitor that provides low resistance path to those frequencies. Okay. After that, I told you whenever we deal with the capacitor, we don't use a word resistance. Okay. Instead of that, we actually use a keyword capacitive reactance. Okay. Because resistance is basically the property which is exhibited by the resistor to provide opposition to the current. Okay. And capacitive reactance is basically the property exhibited by the capacitor 
that provides opposition to the signal so capacitive reactance of capacitor is responsible for the opposition provided by the capacitor to the signal okay also capacitive reactance of capacitor decides whether the signal will be bypassed or not okay so i hope that this point is now clear but you know we actually live in practical world and in practical world when you purchase the capacitor it's not just the capacitor okay it constitute of resistor in some amount then the inductor in some amount and ultimately the capacitor okay so this is how the capacitor look like in practical world and the resistor present in the capacitor is actually called as esr which stands for equivalent series resistance okay and it exhibits the property of resistance then the inductor present in capacitor is actually called as esl which stands for equivalent series inductance and it exhibits the property of inductive reactance okay and in the end capacitor exhibits the property of capacitive reactance okay so the combined effect of resistance inductive reactance and capacitive reactance actually contributes to the impedance of capacitor and out of all the three properties that i mentioned the effect of capacitive reactance will be dominant in the impedance of capacitor because we are dealing with the capacitor so it's obvious that its effect will be dominant okay so now this is very important point always remember whenever you will deal with the capacitor we will deal with the impedance of capacitor okay not just capacitive reactance so impedance of capacitor will decide whether the signal will be bypassed or not okay so if the impedance provided by the capacitor is low then the signal will be bypassed by the capacitor towards the ground and if the impedance provided by the capacitor is high then that signal will not be bypassed okay now the question comes how i will know for what frequencies capacitor provide what impedance okay so this question is actually related to impedance versus frequency plot of capacitor okay and the answer to this question is you need to check the manufacturer website okay actually you know some of the manufacturer provides the impedance versus frequency plot and some of them don't okay so kemet is actually one such manufacturer uh, that actually provides impedance versus frequency plot so what you can do whatever value capacitor you will use uh, you just come to this website and check the impedance versus frequency plot for that particular capacitor okay so if you are using a capacitor from uh, some other manufacturer although uh, the value is same but impedance versus frequency plot for that particular capacitor uh, will actually uh, it will be similar to uh, the impedance versus frequency plot that you will get on this particular website okay so i hope that this point is now clear all right so that's what i wanted to tell in this video and i hope that every single thing that we discussed is now clear to you okay so i will see you in the next video now